So, here we are again. Another Guy Ritchie project so soon after the last one. I can't say I'm disappointed because, well, I'm not. I love his movies, except for this one. I mean, come on man, you're better than this. Anyway, he's a master of crafting creative scenarios, witty dialogue, and charismatic characters. The actors, cinematography, and the settings are always on point, and he's earned himself quite the filmography. From The Gentleman, The Gentleman series, which I did a review on already, go check it out, Man From U.N.C.L.E., and the Sherlock Holmes films starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law. He's great, and I had high hopes for his latest film, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Not only because it seemed like an interesting project, but because it also starred an actor who I have tons of respect for, that being Henry Cavill. Look, I wholly believe Cavill deserves far more than what he's gotten, and is without a doubt a talent that has been mistreated in Hollywood. So, we have a director with a unique creative style, a talented and well-respected actor leading an all-star cast of equally talented actors, and a story based on recently declassified documents. What could go wrong? The answer? Absolutely nothing. This film is a bloody good time, and I have to talk about it. So let's get into it, shall we? Based on a true story, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare follows a group of madmen led by Major March Phillips on an unsanctioned mission dubbed Operation Postmaster. This mission takes our crew deep within enemy territory in order to disrupt the Nazi U-boat resupply operation and turn the tides of the war. However, not all goes according to plan and the team will have to continuously adjust to ever-changing circumstances in order to complete one of the most important missions in military history. This film has everything you'd want from a Guy Ritchie experience. There's innovative camera angles, fluid tracking shots, and visually striking compositions to add energy and excitement to every scene, from the most mundane to the dynamic action sequences. His use of unconventional camera movements is so damn engaging and enhances the overall cinematic experience and sets this film apart from other historical war films. Apart from the cinematography, this movie has his signature sharp wit and clever dialogue, with snappy banter and memorable one-liners. The dialogue-driven scenes are often fast-paced and filled with good humor, the key word being good. This movie is actually pretty funny when it wants to be, and the jokes, more often than not, are character-driven and land. There's a special attention to dialogue here that adds depth to the characters and drives the plot forward in ways I appreciate. It's not boring exposition for the sake of telling, not showing. It's a well-written aspect of the film that would be missed if it wasn't there. Ritchie also has a keen eye for visual storytelling, incorporating bold colors, stylish costumes, and intricate set designs to create visually stunning scenes that immerse you in the story. And that's no different here. His attention to detail and knack for aesthetic flair contribute to the overall impact of this film. You can tell that there is an appreciation for his craft here. The acting is also fantastic. Usually, I'd mention a specific actor who stole the show for me, and I walked into the theater expecting that someone to be Henry Cavill. And while he does a great job here, which isn't a surprise to anybody, I can't say he was the standout. That's not to say someone was better. However, everyone does such a good job with the roles they're given, and each has such great chemistry with the other that it's hard to choose. Every interaction, every line of dialogue, every action scene, every mundane conversation is so captivating when it includes a cast of this caliber. Plus, the level of insanity that is written into their characters and the level to which they're played up makes them all the more interesting to watch. These aren't your run-of-the-mill action heroes. These are people who enjoy killing and relish the opportunity to do some damage. Now, I do have to say that if it wasn't for Guy Ritchie's directing and the stellar cast, this would be no different than your average war movie. After all, it has all the makings of one, a ragtag group of individuals assembled to complete an impossible task that changes the course of the war. It's a pretty standard story for these types of films. I already included a spoiler warning in the beginning of the video, so I'm giving you another out if you don't want to be spoiled. But there isn't much to this movie in terms of surprises, twists, or interesting dynamics, or challenging themes. The good guys win and the bad guys lose, with no casualties to our main cast. So if you're looking for something new, inventive, or different, 
you aren't getting that here. What you are getting is a solid war story that's elevated by competent writing, characters who are so different from your usual protagonists you'd see in these films, and stunning visuals and camera work. In short, I think if you're a history buff or a fan of war films, this is definitely one I can recommend wholeheartedly. However, if you're expecting or want something new or different, this really isn't a film for you. With that being said, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.